What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at the 2021 AP Calc A, B, and B, C question number three. So this is the spinning toy question, and this one was definitely a tricky question. So for part A, the first thing we're going to do is find the area under the curve when C is equal to 6. So if we're letting C equal 6, this tells us our equation is Y equals 6 times X, and then we have radical 4 minus X squared. So what we need to know here is we have to know our limits of integration because we're going to set up this integral. We're going to have the integral of 6 times X radical 4 minus X squared dx. But once again, we have to know where does this region start and stop. So for that, you're going to set the equation equal to zero and your roots for quadrant one are going to be x equals zero and x equals two. So six times x equals zero when x equals zero and four minus x squared equals zero when x is plus or minus two. But once again, we are here in quadrant one. So we're going with x equals two. So that means those are going to be our limits of integration. So from here, we could do our u substitution. We could let u equal 4 minus x squared, which means that du is going to be equal to minus 2x dx. And if we solve for dx, dx is equal to du over negative 2x. And another step here that we could go with is we could find new limits of integration. So the way we find our new limits of integration is we plug the old x limits in our definition of u. So if we go ahead and do that, let's say I plug in the upper limit, x equals 2. That's going to give me 4 minus 2 squared, so our new upper limit is 0. And if I plug in the old lower limit of x equals 0, I have 4 minus 0 squared is 4. So now we could transform this integral. And we're going to have the integral from 4 to 0. We have 6 times x, square root of u, and then dx is equal to du over negative 2x. Now you know you did your u sub correctly or you're starting it correctly if your old variable cancels out completely, which happens in this case. And notice we have 6 divided by negative 2. We could simplify and just put a negative 3 in front of all this. So now a few changes we could make. The negative 3, it'd be nice if it was positive, and we could make it positive if we switch the limits of integration. So I could write this as positive 3, the integral from 0 to 4. And now instead of radical u, we're going to call this u to the 1 half du. And now this is 3 times, we have u to the 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. And then the reciprocal of 3 halves is, let's just fix that up. And it destroyed everything. Let's try that again. So 3 times, we have u to the 3 halves. The reciprocal is 2 thirds. And now our limits are 0 and 4. So now 3 over 3 cancels. And this is going to be 2 times 4 to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves. And this is going to work out to 2 times Square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the third power is 8, and this is just going to be 16. So that's our solution to A. So for part B, the algebra is going to be easier, but the concept is a little trickier. So here, they're giving us the derivative, and they're telling us for a particular spinning toy, the radius of the largest, that's the million dollar phrase right there, the largest cross-sectional circular slice is 1.2 inches, and we have to find the value of C for the spinning toy. So when you think about it, the way these toys are made, or like the visual of these toys, is that we spin this region around the x-axis. So the one with the largest radius, the, the radius of the largest cross-sectional circular slice, what I'm thinking of is where is the radius largest? Because then you could visualize here when we spin this, you see how if we spin one of those, that's going to make one of the circular cross-sectional slices. So the radius is largest at about here. And remember, this is going uh, between 0 and 2, as we saw before. So the radius is here, but it's also this also happens to be the y value. Because any point on this curve is x comma y, so that vertical distance is y. So really what they're telling us is that the y value is maximum, uh, or the maximum y value here is 1.2 inches. And we have to solve for the particular value of c. So there's a lot to digest there, but when you're trying to find the maximum value of a function, you need to set your derivative equal to zero. So notice here, we don't have any spots on the curve where the derivative is undefined. It looks like it's going to happen at about here, but between zero and two, this curve is differentiable everywhere. So we're going to set dy dx equal to zero. And this occurs when the numerator of our derivative is equal to zero. So that's going to be when c times four minus two x squared is equal to zero. Okay, remember, if you set the denominator equal to zero, that tells you where your curve is, uh, where your derivative is undefined. But the numerator equal to zero tells you where it's equal to zero. 
So now c equals zero doesn't make sense because that would just wipe out everything. So four minus two x squared is equal to zero when four is equal to two x squared, which is true when two is equal to x squared. And this gives you x equals square root two. All right, and I'm not gonna go with plus minus here because once again, we're in, we're in quadrant one. Okay, so I'll just kind of mention that here, that we're in quadrant one, so we're going with x equals square root two. So this tells us then that this point is going to be square root two, comma, 1.2. So we have the coordinates here, but remember, the goal is to solve for the value of c. So then now all we have to do is plug in x equals square root two, y equals 1.2 back into the original equation. So we're going to have 1.2 equals c times square root two times the square root of four minus square root two squared. And now it's just a little bit of algebra. But once again, the concept is what made this uh, this question a bit tricky. So now I have four minus two gives me another radical two. So now I have 1.2 equals two times C and then just divide both sides by two. So C is equal to 0 0.6. So now for the last part, for part C here, they're telling us that for another spinning toy, the volume is two pi cubic inches and we wanna find the value of C for this toy. So the idea for this, we kind of had this idea in part B that we drew one of the cross-sectional slices by spinning around the x-axis. But just know the volume of one of those slices is going to be pi times the radius squared. But remember, the radius, we could also say is y. So it's going to be pi times y squared. And the thickness of one of these slices is dx. Because if we're spinning it around the x-axis, that little change in the horizontal direction here is dx. So we have pi times y squared dx. So then if we want to find the volume of the entire toy, it's going from 0 to 2. So I have pi times the integral from 0 to 2. y squared, I'm going to use this equation. If I square both sides, c squared is just c squared. So I have c squared. x times x is x squared. And then the radical term times itself is just going to get rid of the radical and give us 4 minus x squared. And we just tack on dx. So this is the volume of the whole thing. And they told us the volume is equal to 2 pi. So we could replace v with 2 pi. And now I have pi times the c squared we could take out because it's constant. And we have the integral from 0 to 2. And now we'll just distribute the x squared. So we'll have x squared times 4 is 4x squared minus x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. And now we just tack on the dx here. So now we just have to be very careful setting this up. Notice I could just cross off the pi's here because they have, they're matching terms. And I have 2 is equal to c squared times and we have the antiderivative of x squared is going to turn this into four thirds x to the third minus and the antiderivative of x to the fourth is going to give us one fifth x to the fifth and we're evaluating this from zero to two so now we just go forward with this here and this is going to be two is equal to c squared and we're going to use uh we're going to finish using the fundamental theorem of calculus here so now we just have to plug in so first we're going to have four thirds times two to the third power is eight minus one fifth times two to the fifth power is 32. And then conveniently we get to plug in zero. So that simplifies nice. And now here we've got two is equal to C squared times. And notice here, I'm gonna have 32 over three minus 32 over five. So a nice little bit of algebra I could do. Notice that I have a common factor of 32 on top. So right away in my head, I see that, all right, I'm going to have 2 is equal to 32 c squared times 1 third minus 1 fifth. And just on the side, I'll show this here. 1 third minus a fifth is the same thing as 5 over 15 minus 3 over 15, which is going to equal 2 over 15. Okay, so you see, if I take the 32 out of the, both of those numerators, we're left with a third minus a fifth. So now there's just a 2 over 15 left. So we'll just give ourselves space here. So now, look, the 2 over 2 could just cancel out. So I have 1 is equal to 32 over 15 c squared. Just multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So then I would have c squared is equal to 15 over 32. And then to solve for c, we just take the square root of both sides. So c is going to be equal to, we have the square root of 15 over 32. Now on the AP test, they're okay with leaving you leaving your answers like this. If you want to show off and say, oh, this is the square root of 15 over the square root of 16 times the square root of two and say 15 over four radical two, this is also okay, but you could only get yourself into trouble if you do more work. So it's totally fine that you stop at this step here. 
Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the question three from 2021. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.